My name is Alok Nandi, and uh, it's uh, amongst other uh, conversation with Ramon that I'm talking here. So, um, what I'll be talking about is partly connected to this. Did any of you attended a Pechakcha night? Pechakcha means in Japanese blah blah. It's the sound of uh, the voice of conversation. In Japan, when you heard Pechakcha, 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 so it's written Pechakusha and it's pronounced Pechakcha. And Pechakcha is now a kind of worldwide phenomena where speakers have got 20 images and 20 seconds per image. So they have 6 minutes 40 seconds to tell a story. <coughs> it began in uh, Tokyo in 2004, launched by architects, where if you give the floor to an architect or a designer, he takes, she or he takes all your evening. So they decided to constrain. So 20 seconds, 20 images, that makes 6 minutes 40, and you only have 6 minutes 40. So we have written a program and people have to follow the timing with the clock and the screen. We had the 13 Pechakcha speakers last Thursday in Boza in partnership with the festival. And we had Richard Rawls, who is minister, who came and did the, she did the show and she, she made it good. And the idea here is transdisciplinarity. It's um, bringing together architect, designer, storyteller, and, and so on. On that page, pechakcha.ashitempo.net, you have the list of all the speakers. The next one will be on 21st of September. So if some of you want to do a pechakcha night session, you just get in touch with me and we see the story you want to share. So that is the, the entry point. And how do we connect this to today's topic, mobile? and to something else is what I'll take a few minutes. The Chakcha is something which is happening on a timeline. You have 20 seconds, 20 seconds, 20 seconds. Where I'm coming from is something which is happening in the space. For a few years I was the head of new media of the publisher of Tintin, Kasterman. And where what we did is on a graphic novel, bande dessinée, manga, you have surfaces which are split. And the story reconstructs, the user, the reader reconstructs the story space by reconnecting, rebuilding the space with what is happening in the gutter, between the frames. That is one of the specificity of graphic novel language. What we did also is taking graphic novel to screen. And my job was how to translate story space from paper, bande dessinée album, to screen, to websites. And I did websites with people like, uh, do some of you know Sweden and Peters? The Deutscher Städte? I did a website of 1,500 web pages where people used to spend three hours. It was one of the record in the publishing industry of what we call a sticky website. That was in 97, 98, 99. And if, uh, I don't know if your machine is stable enough, we can even go and look to some images. If you go on urbicande.be. It is what we call the concept of, it was based on the concept of a narrative labyrinth. You'd go in the labyrinth and you'd get lost yourself in story space. And what I was doing between 1999 and uh, 2003, 2004 is following technologies and adapting. So uh, you can uh, surf on this. It was essentially in French with a sub mini website in English. There is the introduction in English there. So you can get a feel of things we were doing. The reason why I'm bringing this here is I did websites with people like Mugus. You have heard of Mugus? French. The guy who did Blueberry. 
Giraud, and the, his other name is Mobius, he did science fiction. He worked with Sony during science fiction uh, exhibition. Tardif, Le Chat de Geluc, many people in the French speaking uh, know Geluc. So I've been doing storytelling adaptation using technology. And now what I'm looking into is how to use mobile platform to design story spaces, taking into account the constraint of mobile technologies, <coughs> both in terms of surface, like we know that when we take a bande dessinée and we put that on a small screen, we break the magic, the magic of bande dessinée. Because in bande dessinée, the interesting stuff is what is happening with the frames and between the frames. What do we do when the surface of the screen is small, but we want to reconstruct the storytelling magic of the association between images and words? And that is something where, if I use another language, user-centric design, how would developers working with designers to design story spaces where there is the tension and the dramaturgy of what we call the story space. So that is a question which I think is interesting to be explored in this kind of settings. Because there are a number of technical constraints which we can try to build on to design the story space. The other element is how can we use geolocation specificities to feed into storytelling mechanisms. Like, I don't know if some of you are on Foursquare or are using Gowala. I guess you might be, uh, you are quite a maniac of using this kind of <laughs> location aware. Like I have a friend who, uh, who does lots of food spotting. Every midday he goes in a restaurant, he says, I'm busy eating a water so in that place. So all these bits and pieces of small fragments of moments, of story moments, can be re-articulated in some long line thread stories. And that is something I'm interested to work with developers to invent new modalities of story participation and see even, I don't know, with a publisher like you, to invent a zone where we can experiment. Because when I launched this, I launched what we call a narrative lab, a storytelling lab for publishers like Gasterman and Flammarion in Paris. And we were testing things. We were involving writers and people who make drawings to explore new modalities. So that is the, the framework. I don't know if it speaks to some of you or half of you are in siesta mode. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can, uh, we can make it interactive. Yeah, just before giving you the, the flow, I came with the uh, example of Pechakcha because it's time bound and graphic novel is surface bound, space bound. So this is the area in which I'm working. Two other elements which might be of interest. I'm launching in Belgium Ignite Evenings in connection with O'Reilly, the American publisher. 